Yo, Yankees fans, how's it going yet again? It is Felix from NYNews.com. Like always, hola como estas? Let's talk about how the Yankees have been able to expose the Red Sox, at least at, from the game that they won and the game that they lost, that they should have won. The Yankees have exposed their bullpen. The Yankees obviously have exposed uh, David Price numerous times. The Red Sox, as of now, in my opinion, are sitting ducks. They really don't have, let's say, a starting pitcher to lean back on because Sale is not 100%. They don't have that shutdown pitcher, let's say, let's go back to 2001, Kurt Schilling and Randy Johnson. They had two aces. They could bring them anytime in any game, shut the Yankees down. The Red Sox do not have that. Maybe with Kimbrough, but he's their closer. So, really, the Red Sox are sitting ducks, and the Yankees have full-on advantage, in, obviously, in the series. But the Yankees need to take advantage of this. They need to take the Red Sox out of their running game. The Red Sox are a pesky team. Obviously, when they get on, there's a good chance J.D. Martinez is going to drive them in. There's a good chance that they're going to bunt. There's a good chance that they're going to steal a base. The Yankees in Game 2, they found the recipe, obviously the recipe that it takes to beat the Red Sox. Keep them off base. Do not give J.D. Martinez the opportunity to drive in runs. They did that perfectly for Game 2. This is the same recipe, obviously, that they're going to follow for Game 3 at Yankee Stadium. And hopefully for Game 4 when they win that series. So at this point, I wouldn't be too concerned for John Carlos Stanton. Maybe if he flops again in the big situation, but there's so many hitters on the Yankees when they're playing, especially when they're playing at home, that you really don't have to worry about John Carlos Stanton. He could go 0 for 5, 0 for 4. He could strike out five times. It doesn't matter. Somebody else is going to pick up his bat in this lineup. Somebody else is going to come through and contribute. So my other thing that I want to talk about, this is a serious note, guys. I want you to really listen. When it comes down to politics, I'm more of a common sense guy. I'm going to tell you this. Whatever I think politically, let's just say this, I did not vote for Hillary Clinton. But I'm not going to sit here and say that because people voted for her or they have liberal views or any other sort of view that I'm going to hate them. No, that's, it's the opposite. I know that when I go to clubs, I know when I go out, I know when I go to the stadium, I know when I go on vacation, that I'm going to meet people of different perspectives and backgrounds. And I'm saying it in a way, you pretty much know who your coworkers are when you go to work. You know who they support, what they believe in, etc. I'm talking about when you meet random people, you cannot judge them. Just because they view the world differently than you doesn't mean that when I say Brazier was blatantly racist towards Gary Sanchez, nobody can tell me that he wasn't because his excuse was that it was a heat of a moment thing and he was just angry. He was just hyped up. Really, you're going to tell a Latino player to get in the effing box before that cursing him out and after you said get in the effing box, you cursed him even more. And everybody gave him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe Gary Sanchez trash-talked him or whatever. But come to know, this guy said that it was a heat of a moment thing. So yes, I am disgusted by individuals that could even defend Brazier because you don't know him personally, but you could judge him by his actions. I don't care who you voted for, what your political ideology is. This is the problem in America. Even if you support a, a, a certain party... It doesn't mean that you could dismiss real issues in society. So take this for an example. Say somebody votes for Trump, okay? And you saw what Brazier did. Just because you voted for him, and I'm going to tell you this again, I did not vote for Hillary Clinton. Just because you voted for Trump, okay, doesn't mean you could dismiss a blatant racist gesture because it could be perceived as racist, because I'm going to tell you this again. The way it went down, people are forgetting the other half of the country. Like I said, when I go to the club, I might be in the same club where 
cops who got off of work and want to enjoy, let's say, the nightlife, they might be there. Uh, a whole bunch of people that voted for Hillary Clinton, they're obviously going to be there. A whole bunch of people that voted for Trump, maybe, will be there. A whole bunch of people that voted for this and that is going to be there. You see, nobody knows, but you're having a great time together. This is what I'm talking about. People tend to forget the other half of the country of any subject. Even if you don't think what Brazier said of Gary Sanchez getting the effing box, imagine if it was Mookie Betts and David Robertson told him that Mookie Betts get in the effing box. You're going to tell me in America today that a certain percentage of people looking at that, let's say Gary Sanchez is Dominican. Let's say a 10-year-old Dominican boy or girl is looking at Gary Sanchez. Let's say they see Brazier telling Gary Sanchez to get in the effing box. What kind of example? Either way, even if you don't think it's racist, in my opinion, I do not think Brazier is racist. What I'm telling you guys is that there's a certain percentage of people in this country and around the world that are going to be offended by that. And there's going to be the other half that doesn't understand why they're offended. So as a society, what is the best thing to do? The best thing to do is cut it in half. Let's meet halfway. And let's say, oh yeah, he shouldn't have done that or shouldn't have said that. Not because we're the PC police, because he's just a raging lunatic. How about that? How about... That Brazier, obviously judging by his post-game comments, that he's a raging lunatic and he shouldn't have done that. Maybe let's go, let's meet halfway and stop defending the guy and maybe say, oh yeah, maybe what he said and how he came about wasn't right. Let's not celebrate things like that. Because like I said, there's too many sensitive people in this world to say, oh, let's make that a meme now. Because all Red Sox fans were making a meme out of Gary Sanchez getting in the effing box. He might as well have told Gary Sanchez to get my effing shine box. Like Joe Pesci and the Goodfellas. That's what I'm trying to say. So before you say, oh, it's another white man being labeled as racist. Trust me, I'm the last guy that would ever label anybody as racist. If you knew my political ideology. But in this instance, like I told you again, I don't care who you voted for. Use common damn sense. Gary Sanchez is a Latino player. Gary Sanchez was told, get in the effing box by a raging lunatic. Either way, how is that fine? Either way, his post-game comments confirmed that Brazier is a raging lunatic. So for people to be in the comments defending this guy, even if you are Yankees fans, let's meet in the middle. Everybody meet in the middle. Let's all agree on sportsman-like conduct. Are you going to tell your 10-year-old boy or girl to tell their classmates when they play sports to tell their classmate that get in the effing box? No, right? It's a bad example. That's what I'm trying to say. So for people that are saying in comments saying that I'm trying to divide people off racial stuff, listen to yourself. I'm trying to unite people. I'm trying to say here, let's all come together. Let's meet in the middle and forget about all this political BS, period. This whole subject has been blown out of proportion. It's obvious, unsportsmanlike conduct, period. That's the whole issue here. But people want to blow it up saying that a, another white man is being attacked for being white and being labeled racist. Trust me, I'm the last guy, if you knew, that would label anybody as racist. When it comes down to it, I do not belong to any party. The party I belong to is the common sense party. I do not take other people's issues and say, oh yeah, I don't agree with those issues because so-and-so believes in it. You don't know why somebody believes what they believe. So I'm not going to judge anybody. This is why we can't unite as a country. In my honest opinion, people are going to disagree. 
if you are on the left or the right or the middle. It's so basic to unite on basic principles. But people have big egos that, oh, yeah, you voted for this person or that person. Uh, your opinion doesn't count. And like I said, I did not vote for Hillary Clinton. And you can put two and two together of who I voted for. And that's coming from me. I bet you don't hear that often, right? I bet you don't hear that often. But I'm here to tell you. Long story put short, what Brazier did was unsportsmanlike conduct. People in this country are sensitive to those issues. Then there's other people that say, ah, F it. Even though we're all American, uh, forget it. Uh, F it, I'm just going to sweep it under the rug. Uh, these these snowflakes, um, I have no idea why they believe what they believe. I have no idea if, let's say, they got traumatized, they got PS PTSD from some sort of situation. I don't care. I'm just going to judge people and not see as Americans as Americans because the other half, they don't speak how I speak. That's the problem, folks. You guys, people forgot the humanity in humanity, if that makes sense. So there, there's my opinion. You guys want to leave comments saying I shouldn't be calling or saying something could be perceived as racist? I just laid it out completely. That's my perspective. And if you don't want to agree completely, there's going to be more Red Sox players. There's going to be more players even around sports that show unsportsmanlike conduct like Brazier. And let's be honest here, folks, because the other half of the country, there's a high percentage of people that are going to sweep it under the rug and say, Psh, you shouldn't even pay attention to that. Um, shut up. What he did, uh, it's, it's America. Just let him live. Um, everybody is the same. The, um, there's no such thing as Gary Sanchez being a Latino man in this country. There's no such thing as Mookie Betts being an African-American in this country. If somebody says, get in the effing box, let them say, get in the effing box, and let's not raise the issue of saying, hmm, maybe that is going to look pretty bad to, let's say, the other half of the country. You don't know what these little kids are being taught by their parents. You don't know. So there, you just heard this coming from, like I said, a person that did not vote for Hillary Clinton. Sure, there's bad apples, but if you judge what I just said, make up your mind. Maybe that side that I just defended, they're going to look at other people a different way. People that, let's say, did not vote for Hillary Clinton, they're going to see, they're going to hear my voice and say, maybe I shouldn't judge the other side. Just like oh, I just did, I did not judge your side. That's what you could take away from this discussion. So like always, folks, this has been Felix from NYNews.com. Share, like, and subscribe, and I will check you out next time.